the Tradescantia, the plant that made me go bald. You see this plant proudly displayed in your local garden center, and it looks as lush and full as Russell Brand's hair. So you buy it without hesitation. You bring it home, nurture it like it's your newborn baby, hoping it will blossom into a big, beautiful specimen in your home. But instead, you watch it slowly turn into the creature from the Black Lagoon. Brown leaves, bare stems, crispy foliage. This plant has all your worst nightmares in one pot and you really can't understand what went wrong. Well, there are a few things you need to really understand about this plant to get the best out of it that you're probably not aware of. And I'm gonna share them with you in this video so that you can have awesome Russell Brat, I mean, Tradescantias in your home. There are a ton of varieties of Tradescantias out there, including the Zabrina that most of you will have owned at some point. My favorite variety, the Tricolor, the Green Albiflora, which is a new addition for me, as well as the furry variety, such as the Purple Pelida and the Teddy Bear Vine. They all pretty much have the same growing habits, as well as the same annoying bad traits that makes them eventually look so ugly, so the care tips in this video can be applied to pretty much all of them. The first thing we need to understand about this plant is how it grows in its natural habitat. Once we understand this, we unlock so many doors to understanding many of the issues that plague this plant in our homes. So, Tradescantias naturally occur in the grasslands and open fields of North America and Mexico. They are found elsewhere in the world, of course, but this is where they're most widespread. In these areas, particularly where it is warm for most of the year, they are considered invasive with a tendency to take over an area in the blink of an eye. Let me know in the comments if this is the case in your area. The reason they are invasive is because they are so prolific and very hard to get rid of, and this is all down to the way they grow. They are vining plants that creep along the floor of open fields, attaching itself to the dirt at each leaf node on the stems and growing new roots along the way. This means that a single stem of this plant can reach massive lengths and take over an area in no time. They're such fast growers. A stem will creep along the ground and wherever there is a leaf node, new roots will grow into the ground, strengthening the stem in the process. You can cut off the bloodline to this stem at the base of the plant, wherever that is, but because it's grown new roots along the way, it happily goes on with its life like nothing's happened. And you can see why this plant is classed as a weed in so many places. It's also why it's so easy to propagate. You basically just need to rest the stem on some soil and roots will start to sprout in about a week. Try this experiment yourself at home. So what's the problem then? Well, the plant is used to sending out stems along the ground and open fields strengthen itself by growing roots along the way. Without this rooting and strengthening process, the stems become weak and the leaves die off, leaving a bare stem. And this is exactly what happens in our homes. We set this plant in a pot for its stems to freely hang down without realizing this is actually hurting it. You see, there's absolutely nothing for the plant to grow its roots into. The stems are stranded hanging in midair. The stems grow longer and longer, searching for some soil to root into. It doesn't find anything, so eventually it weakens until it starts to lose its leaves. And this is why we have a Tradescantia with bare stems in our home. So what's the solution then? Well, you have a couple of options. The first is to set your plant in a pot with a wide diameter, but relatively shallow depth. You can even use one of those rectangular pots. This then allows you to fix the stems along the soil, allowing it to grow roots at multiple leaf node points from which new branches will sprout. This will result in a really bushy plant with lots and lots of stems. You can use a bobby pin or something similar like a paper clip to affix the stems in place and you're good to go. The stem will continue to grow along the soil in the pot constantly creating new growth points in the process. Happy days. The problem with this method, however, is that you'll eventually run out of room in the pot. You'll get as crowded as a mosh pit at a heavy metal concert. Of course, you can up pot the plant, but there's only so many times you can do this. You'll eventually run out of room in your house. And this is where the second option comes in. When the pot gets overcrowded and the stems start to flow over the edge of the pot, like Rapunzel's hair flows out of her castle, you can pinch the tips of the stems off. This stops the growth of that stem in its tracks. And if there's one thing I hope I've taught you on this channel, it's that the stem of a plant always wants to survive, so it will grow new shoots lower down the stem. This will keep the plant super bushy and compact 
with a full head of hair, unlike yours truly. So if you have lots of long stems on your plant, try pinching the tips off to encourage branching further back. You should end up with a much bushier plant. You will get to a point though where it becomes unruly and unmanageable, in which case you may want to reset it and start again. Luckily for us, this plant is hands down the easiest plant to propagate in the world. No joke, this plant will grow roots in a matter of days. All we need to do is cut a stem off underneath a leaf node, remove the lower leaves, leaving two or three leaves at the tip, and then plant into some soil. Don't bother propagating in water or perlite prop boxes, there's really no need. So this is exactly what I've done countless times to my Tridescantias when they've started to turn into ugly ducklings. I completely reset the plant by cutting off all the stems and putting it in new soil and I soon have a very full plant on my hands. Annoying trait number two, which I've no doubt you'll be struggling with right now if you own one of these plants, is crispy brown leaves. If you own this plant, then it's as much a certainty in life as the sun rising each morning and setting in the evening. Unfortunately, I've come to terms with the fact that there is no way to completely avoid this from happening. This plant is just not meant to be grown indoors. They are free spirits who would much rather take over a field or garden and be confined to the small diameter of a plant pot. But there are a few things we can do to mitigate this. Now, one of the causes of brown leaves is related to the bare stems problem I've already talked about. The stems grow weaker and weaker in our homes unless they have soil to attach onto and grow roots, leading to leaves dying back. You've got the remedy for this. The second cause though is splashback on the leaves when you water your plant. This plant hates having moisture sitting on its leaves for a long time. They're sensitive things and will rot if water is left to dry on them. So if you're heavy handed with your watering can or even watering with an indoor plant's worst nightmare, a rose head attachment and getting the leaves wet in the process, you are slowly destroying your plant. You need to find a way to only get the soil wet and not the leaves. And this is where bottom watering comes in. I highly recommend bottom watering this plant. It's effective because water is drawn up through the soil from the bottom leaving the top of the soil relatively dry. This will stop your Tradescantia's leaves from getting wet through splashback, which is what happens with top watering, and also stops the leaves sitting on wet soil, which will lead to leaf rot. There are other benefits to bottom watering, such as better root development, because the roots are encouraged to grow down and away from the crown of the plant in search of water. Plus, it keeps the top of the soil dry, keeping those pesky fungus gnats at bay. All you do is add about a third of the volume of the pot of water to the saucer or decorative pot for the plant to soak up. If you wait until the plant is dry before watering, then it should soak up all the water no problem. If it does this within a couple of minutes, then add some more, your plant is clearly very thirsty. If water is still standing there after a day, then just simply discard it. In this case, you probably watered before you needed to. Over the many years of owning this plant, I've battled long and hard in my mind over whether this plant likes to have moist soil like a calafea or drier soil like a ficus. Through lots of experimentation, I've concluded that these plants like to have their soil dry out completely before watering. If you water the plant regularly and keep the soil always moist, then this tends to lead to rotting leaves and bare stems due to high humidity in the plant. To monitor this, I always use my moisture meter before watering and I highly recommend you do the same. I've got a full in-depth video on bottom watering, including all the benefits that you can check out by clicking on the link here.